Okay, so hello everyone, hope you're doing well. And today we're continuing on with our ANOVAs and we're gonna be looking at factorial repeated measures ANOVA this time. So moving on from our between groups last time. So let's get straight into it. So we've got a task here. So a researcher was interested in giving people different types of glucose during an um, OGTT, change the blood glucose response over time. So 10 individuals undertook three different conditions in which they measured blood glucose every 30 minutes for two hours. So what's telling us is that, that this is a repeated measures. So we've got that measurement of blood glucose every 30 minutes for two hours and we're testing the same 10 individuals. So we know this is a repeated measures um, vibe. Kind of like doing a kind of a more in-depth dependent t-test. So let's jump into Chamovi and see what we can do. Okay, so we've got our data here. So we've got, we've got actually eight individuals. We've got our glucose for 120 minutes and then we've got polycal and we've got leukosate. Yeah, so because there's not really a non-parametric equivalent, we can basically jump straight into the test. So what we can do, so it's also useful to get the explorations, kind of the numbers if you want for your descriptive data part. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna jump straight into repeated measures on over here. Okay, so we've got our view here. So what you wanna do is because we need to put all of these in here, we kind of wanna separate them out. So our first factor is, uh, let's say, drink type. So we've got, uh, we've got just glucose, we've got polycal, and we've got leukosate. So we've got our three parts here. Then we want to add another factor because we tested it at different times. So let's put time in here and let's do 0, 30, 60, 90, and 20 minutes because we obviously tested them every half an hour. And then all we can simply do is basically, because you've got them all in order, and the same as you've inputted the data, we can simply just highlight all of them and just pop them straight in and all the associated values should be correct here. So let's wait for Jamovi to do its thing. Okay, so we've got our results here. The same, literally the same as the between groups and ever, except we just need to separate this out a little bit. So as we can see, drink, because this value is above 0 0.05, this drink had no effect on um, the glucose levels, blood glucose, and then that's also highlighted by the small f value. However, time did, a did have a significant effect uh, with this p and f value, and the, the interaction between drink and time were non-significant. So uh, we'll me mention all of that in the um, write-up. But what we wanna do is we need to do some assumption checks. So for this one, I believe it didn't quite work, as in the tests won't come up as they usually do because there's some sort of error, but let's see. Yeah, so there's a bit of an error. But basically what you want to say, uh, what you want to do is the same as with all the other assumptions checks we did, so homogeneity and normality, we want to, for the assumption to be met and us to be able to continue normally with our test, we need this p-value to be above 0 0.05. And that's when the assumption's met and we're all good, we don't need to do anything else. However, if this p-value for the sphericity is below 0 0.05, we haven't met the assumption. And what we need to do is we look at the greenhouse geyser epsilon here, this value here. If for any of these, the value, so if we haven't met the assumption, we look here. And if the, um, any of these values is below 0 0.75, we go over here on the left and it, click the greenhouse geyser effect here. And that will give, a, and that will change things up here and you have the greenhouse geyser. If this value is above 0 0.75, we use the HF epsilon here and that will change um, the thing here. And you basically use the different uh, residues. And for the exam, you don't need to write that um, the assumption of serosity hasn't been met because this degrees of freedom if you look at the greenhouse geyser, so what, you, what usually happens is, um, but because this data is a bit weird, what will happen is these degrees of freedom will go into like decimals, so it'll be like 13.75 or something like that, and that will just tell the examiner that, that you've done this correction, so you don't need to write, as we as we don't with all the other assumptions, so we don't need to, really need to mention that the assumption of serosity hasn't been met, because they would just see it from that. Uh, however, because we have no um, alternative our non-parametric equivalent if you haven't met the assumption of homogeneity or normality um, it's always good to mention that because that has an effect on the overall but for now uh, we're just going to assume that we've met the assumption and we're just going to carry on as we did so we've got these values here so that's the overall effect but obviously we need more uh, kind of information so first things first let's look at 
uh, our graph to see if we can get any ideas of what we're looking at there. Okay, so we've got our graph here. So we've got our blood glucose on the left and the y-axis and time at the bottom. So as you can see, we've got a quite different, a quite big difference between 0 and 30 as well as 0 and 60. And then the blood glucose kind of levels off in a 90 and 120. So because we saw time ha does have a significant effect on blood glucose, we want to mention the post hoc here and the, the T statistic there. So if we go straight into the post hoc and put in time, because we know drink and uh, as well as the interaction between drink and type has no significant effect, uh, we don't need to worry about them. Okay, so um, as it's loading, so we want to report um, the significant differences. So there was a significant difference between 0 and 30 minutes by this um, p-value here below 0 0.05, so we want to report that, um, as well as 60. And then you can say between 90 and 120, the um, blood glucose levels started to level off again as there's no significant difference there. Um, so that's basically all you need to um, mention there. Uh, let me just jump in straight into Word and show you what I've written up. Okay, so firstly for the overall effect, so there was no significant difference in glucose levels between the different drink types. And then you write the F statistic 214 and then the degrees of freedom, sorry, and then the F statistic and P value. And you've got that there. And then you write there was no interaction between treatment um, and time as well, so you can write that in. However, there was a significant ef um, effect of time on the measurement, and we write that. And then uh, just a quick little post hoc. There's not really much to write about this one, but we've got there was a significant difference at 30, and we've got write our T statistic, degrees of freedom, T value, P, and that's all available from this column here. And then um, the same for 60 minutes as well, and you can uh, compare that to the baseline. Uh, yeah, so you just say compare to the time zero, basically. And then you can just add a quick note that then they return to baseline with no difference differences between 90 and 120 minutes with the baseline. So yeah, that was basically it for the back factor uh, um, repeated measurements on over. Next video has got our, next, our final session on this. Uh, we've got our mix and over. So we're basically going to put in the repeated measurement between groups together to see what happens there. So that's all for now. Thank you for watching and... Yeah, don't forget to like, subscribe, all that good stuff, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheerio.